Tax Synergy is a uh, shorter trial, also trying to answer the question of first-line cabazitaxel versus first-line docetaxel, but it really has a couple of unique elements to its design. Um, so this is a randomized phase two trial, and we plan to enroll about 100 patients. The study has recently opened to accrual, and the study has the following two arms. In the first arm, patients will start with first-line docetaxel. After four cycles of chemotherapy, if patients achieve a 30% or greater PSA reduction, that will be considered a favorable response and they will stay on docetaxel until they have radiographic progression. However, if patients do not achieve a 30% or more drop in their PSA after the first four cycles, patients will immediately switch to receiving cabazitaxel even prior to clinical or radiographic progression. So that's arm one, which ends up splitting into two separate arms. Arm two is the exact opposite. Patients start with first-line cabazitaxel. Those patients that have a 30% or greater PSA reduction using cabazitaxel in the first-line setting will remain on that drug until radiographic or clinical progression. And those patients that receive first-line cabazitaxel and do not achieve a 30% PSA reduction after four cycles will then switch to receiving immediate second-line docetaxel in that setting until clinical or radiographic progression. So that's the, the first unique aspect of the trial is this so-called early switch in therapy, which is determined after the first four cycles. And the goal here is to not necessarily keep patients on a therapy that might not be showing clinical evidence of activity. And the second unique aspect about this trial is some of the molecular biomarkers that are built into the study. And specifically, we will be analyzing circulating tumor cells or CTCs. And um, the basis for doing that is that there has been a recent literature that is emerging that the taxane chemotherapies such as docetaxel and cabazitaxel may potentially have at least part of their effect by inhibiting or impairing translocation of the androgen receptor from the cytoplasm into the nucleus. In other words, more than just an antimicrotubule effect, which was the original hypothesized mechanism of these agents. And the group um, led by Dr. Evi Janakaku um, at Cornell has, has shown very nicely um, in the lab that uh, the, the taxane agents um, in some cases have the ability to prevent the androgen receptor from binding to microtubules and using the microtubule as a transport mechanism to enter into the nucleus. And if the AR can remain in the cytoplasm, then it's inactive. And so the drug can be effective in that setting. However, in other cases where the drugs like uh, taxanes do not prevent um, the androgen receptor from binding to the microtubules, that can very easily enter into the nucleus where it's active. And in those patients, there is some correlation with taxane resistance. So what we're going to do as part of this tax synergy trial is collect circulating tumor cells from patients and use those cells to interrogate whether or not the androgen receptor is binding to microtubules and whether it's being sequestered in the cytoplasm, which we would, we would expect to be consistent with a response, or whether it's actually traveling into the nucleus, which we would equate with potentially resistance to those agents. So I think this is a study that I'm very excited to uh, enroll to, and I think it's going to answer a number of questions, not only uh, what is the role of cabazitaxel in the first line setting, but also what is the role of an early switch from one taxane to another, as well as can we develop potential biomarkers from CTCs to predict responses or resistance to taxane agents.